Hey, what's going on guys? Brandon here with Texas Plinking, and I'm gonna talk about a particular subject that I get asked about quite a bit, whether it's on a YouTube comment, Instagram DMs is a big one. Um, and it's something that I think, I don't know, maybe it's something that's gonna be addressed in as soon as a couple of years, because the optics game is changing so, so fast. So the subject matter is I'm gonna be talking about economic optics all the way up to very expensive optics, what some of the differences are, and no matter what your budget is, maybe some of the bulletin points to look for in choosing an optic for long range shooting, knowing there's different tasks as well, whether it's hunting, bench rest rifles, a decent amount to go over. And rather than just paralysis by analysis, I think I'm gonna to try to make this pretty surface level and just kind of like a very easy to digest video. Cause on the table, let's just get right into it. I've got three different optics with the cheapest being right here. This is brand new, I haven't shot through it, hardly even looked through it, but this is a newly released Arcan Optics LH4. It's a four to 16 by 44. First off, the price point. MSRP, under $300, I think it's 260 something, something like that. Whatever it is, I know when I use the coupon code Texas Plinking, it brings it down to like 200 flat or 199.95, you get the idea. It's $200. Right here in the middle of the road, we have a Black Hound, um, and this here is the 4232 which is a massive zoom range, and that's by 56 millimeter objective lens. We'll talk about that in just a little bit too. Those are priced around, I'm gonna have to double check, I think the MSRP on those is more so around $1,700, $1,800. And at the highest end here, we've got a Vortex Razor HD Gen 3. It's a six to 36 by 56. MSRP is almost five grand, so don't let that discourage you. MSRP is like 4,600, but they actually sell retail new from main distributors for around $3,000. So have that number in your head. So we got anywhere from $200 to $3,000. There's a lot of things I can't cover, but we've got Blackhound, Arkin, Vortex. Of course, we could bring in other stuff like Night Force, Schmitz, this, that, there's other economic ones. Here's the three. We've got 200, 3,000, and pretty much right down the middle. So that being said, five years ago, six years ago, if you told me there's an optic for $200, I would have literally thought that's maybe a very high-end optic to throw on an airsoft gun, maybe no more than that. It, it can't track well, no way you can look through it uh, reliably and, and be a, a pleasant shooting experience. Uh, so many times people would get all their money put into the rifle and then they end up cheaping out on the optic and it kind of ruins the whole experience. I don't know, like you always heard the rule of thumb is you want to spend as much on the optic as you did on the rifle. And I don't disagree with that to this day, but that doesn't mean there's exceptions out there that you don't really need to. Sometimes the optic can be more than the rifle. Sometimes it can actually be quite a bit less. The reason I even have the economic $200 Arkin on this rifle, in case you guys don't recognize it, this is the Altera Arms Mountain Shadow Carbon Elite, 6.5 PRC. And last time you guys saw it, it had a Night Force on it. Uh, Altera sent me the rifle, uh, but they had a Night Force. That was Altera's own Night Force, so I sent it back to them. And I'm actually gonna be putting on a Vortex Razor LHT on this at some point when it comes in. But in the meantime, I thought how funny would it be, or funny or just to prove a point, I guess, to put a $200 optic on a $6,300 rifle. So the MSRP on this is $265.99. Uh, coupon code Texas Plinking makes it $199.49. Uh, and that code works with everything, not just this optic. You can see 25% off, by the way. Okay, so let's talk about some of the specs on this particular one. Four to 16 zoom range, four to 16 times zoom by 44. The 44 is the size of the objective lens. Hunting optics will usually have a smaller bell on there as well. The objective lens allows some more light to transfer in makes for a better viewing experience under dimmer light situations. Um, this is, surprisingly enough, for the price point, it's a first focal plane. If you're brand new to the subject, to explain that, first focal plane, to make it really short, means as you zoom into your image, zooming in from four to the 16 range, you're obviously zooming into the image, and so is your reticle. Your reticle is moving in, so all the relativity is the same. If it says it's a drop of two, four, six mils, that mil grows with the image, so that two, four, six mils is the same. Less math, less thinking, and that was a very premier feature found in optics over seven years ago. That was something that you had to pay quite a bit for. And second focal plane optics were quite a bit less. Here we go, $200 optic, it's first focal plane. And there's two nice reticle selections as well. Um, both mil and MOA, more simple uh, crosshairs and more information rich kind of Christmas tree looking one. That's what we got here. It's got a 30 millimeter main tube diameter, so this tube right here is 30 millimeter and surprisingly enough for the price point it's got illumination as well just the center part of it which is all you need just to glow it a little bit if you are shooting at dust situations again good for hunting and there you go it's also got a zero reset what it doesn't have is a zero stop which is a feature that once you land on a zero and you start shooting long range dial 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 you dial beyond that zero again as you bring it back down to the 100 yard zero you don't even have to think about it you just keep going until it stops and that is the zero for 100 yards 
That's not a feature found on this one, just again, because a price point can't have it all. Uh, but you could get around it just by remembering the zero or by knowing its purpose. This is a hunting oriented optic. And so with that said, zero it for 100 yards. And from then on, you've got plenty of mills or MOA to hold over. So you may never actually access those clicks again. You'll hold for elevation and wind once you're confident in your zero. So that works out. So that being said, again, $199.49 when you use that a coupon code for that optic. So I'm obviously very curious to see what that's all about. Just from looking at it a little bit uh, in my backyard before it was mounted on a rifle, glass seems plenty fine. Reticle seems very fine. And it tactility clicks, everything, zoom ring, quality seems nice. Again, $200, I would have scoffed at that not long ago, but I got on a $6,300 rifle and we're gonna see how it does. All right, now moving on to the middle point. We've got a Black Hound Emerge 4 to 32 by 56. $1,799, coupon code Texas Plinking, uh, drops it down quite a bit. It makes it $1,529, so 1530 for this guy right here. And once again, that code works with everything on their website, but particularly we're talking about the 4032 Emerge. This is an example that's first focal plane. I believe there's a second focal plane for a little bit less money, but I would of course personally recommend first focal plane. So once again, zooms in on the reticle as it zooms into the image. Um, 34 millimeter main tube, which actually kind of started becoming standard over the last few years. A little bit bigger tube diameter, which allows more elevation packed in. Um, so just more adjustment before you start having to rely on your holdover can bring you out to some decent distance, obviously depending on the caliber you're shooting without getting too far into it. 34 millimeter main tube, and it's also got illumination. It's got a zero stop and a zero reset, obviously. And the finale right here, we're talking about the Vortex Razor HD line. $4,799 is the MSRP, but they never sell for MSRP. Um, retail really is more so around the $3,000 range. I think the cheapest you could find them new is $2,700 if you have a membership to a sportsman guide. I think that's the cheapest way to get it. Otherwise, they're like $3,000 on Amazon. So pick your poison on how you want to secure one. Um, there you go. Uh, actually, maybe 2760 2, on Amazon now that I'm looking at my notes. So there you go, under three grand. First focal plane to be expected. Illuminated reticle, very, very cool reticle as well, in my opinion, a lot of information. 34 millimeter main tube, zero stop, zero reset, of course. Now every rifle scope's gonna be a little different in how you set the zero stop. They made it stupid easy on this one. There's only one screw, you can zero it within the zero. I won't overcomplicate it, I really like this. There's a couple other little gimmicky, not gimmicky, kind of neat, geeky features. As you rotate through your revolutions past your zero, this little thing starts sticking out of the left side with these little hashes, so you know if you're on the first, second, or third revolution of your turret. Really cool stuff going on with this optic. Of course, you have to pay for it. Everything's perspective. That seems expensive, and it is. I'm not gonna say that's a little bit of money, but easily you could double that, and there's a scope out there that sells for $6,000. There's a lot of people out there, not making fun of y'all, Maybe we've all been there to some extent, but there's a lot of people buying these very gimmicky optics on Amazon. They got blue illumination, green illumination, red illumination, this, that, and they're like 80 bucks and they got a laser on top. That's not something you wanna be throwing on a real rifle, in my opinion, we'll just be nice and say it that way. But yeah, there's, there's gimmicky stuff. And then in my opinion, the bottom of where it starts is around that 200-ish dollar range, maybe Again, I'll be surprised that things could come down even less than that, but I'm not even saying Arkin Optics is the end-all be-all. I have limited experience with primary arms that I've only ever heard good things, so check those out if you want to as well. There's finally the point now to where things don't have to break the bank to have the experience that I've always wanted people to have. When you buy such a cheap optic that doesn't work and you put on a decent rifle, it ruins the experience. So we're at the point now to where scopes for not a lot of money can give you that experience. And I'm very uh, happy about that. I'm gonna just take a look through the optic, do my best I can with my phone to kind of give you guys an idea of what I'm seeing. Again, it's not gonna give you guys the quality transfer per se, but uh, just, I don't know, take my word for it. First time I've ever looked through this optic on a rifle downrange using the parallax and everything. Uh, so let's go ahead and just see what it's about. All right, I'm gonna start off 100 yards here. I'm gonna set the parallax to 100. Interesting, the parallax almost has like click values to it. Wow, the parallax actually clicks while I do it. I've never had that before. Okay, now it's at 100. I'm gonna look at 100 yards here. I'll take my glasses off just to see the most native form of it. Nice field of view at four power. In fact, I'll go ahead and throw a picture down there. It's gonna be really hard to give that perspective, um, but hopefully you guys can see some. Now I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in a little bit. Let's go to like, let's just go all the way to the top. Let's go to 16 power, parallax was right on the money for the most part. Yeah, 100 yards is super clear. 
Yeah, looking at it, uh, 16 power, 100 yards, super clear. I will say the only thing, and this is something I expected, on some of the edges, there's like a little bit of chromatic aberration. So a couple like the pink, purpley hues on some of the edges, but nothing I can't, nothing that's gonna bother me too much. Man, I'm looking through a $200 scope. First focal plane, really nice reticle. Not much to complain about. The only thing is, of course, if it doesn't work under the recoil of a 6.5 PRC, but we're about to find out soon. Let's keep going. Let's go over to uh, 526 yards. All right, well, nothing a scope can do about Mirage. So there's Mirage moving out there, but um, I can play some shots pretty confidently, I feel, at 526. This is looking really nice. Glass is not looking like an economic scope. So looking at my video footage on my phone, it's definitely being lost in translation. Um, so you got to take my word for it. That, that looks really nice. 526 yards, let's go. Let's just jump right to 950 yards, why not? Yeah, I could play some shots on 950, as we will in a little bit. Let me fix my parallax. Once again, the video is just not going to give a perspective. Man, all the way down to four power, too. The field of view is awesome. All right, well, that's in theory anyway. Um, before we shoot, let me just jump on the table real quickly with the other two scopes, just to say I compared them and kind of see what I can see. And then we'll just spend the remaining part of the video zeroing this thing and stretching it out. For the price of this, you could get eight of those Arkins, right? Did I do that math correctly? I believe so. So what do you get? You get... At 16 power anyway, quite a bit more of a fine reticle. I didn't think the other one wasn't fine, but not until I go on here. It seems very, very fine. I think there's more information on the Arkin I did like, but this has plenty. Christmas tree oriented as well. Two, three, four, five, six mil hashes all the way down to 10. No numbers on the wind. Uh, really, really nice. Glass quality looking really good. Not a whole lot of chromatic aberration. I'm not seeing as much pinkiness to it. Yeah, it looks really good. And once again, uh, zooming out to four, um, pretty nice uh, field of view as well. So yeah, not much to complain about. Let's go ahead and crank it all the way to 32 at 100 yards. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a hell of a lot of zoom. Wouldn't need that at 100 yards. All right, now let's go ahead and back it down to 16 power. And that wind is wild. And uh, let's just go to 526 yards. Yeah, that's quite nice as well. That fine reticle is looking real nice. Gonna crank it to 32. Now I have to fix my parallax a little bit. Now it's on the money. What I'm struggling with with my phone is it's just gonna drop that exposure quite a bit and focusing is a nightmare, but 32 power, 526 yards. Mm, I don't need that much zoom. It starts to close out a little bit, but I could st certainly use it. Honestly, 24 power is plenty enough. I don't even need that much, honestly. But yeah, 526 looks pretty good. Once again, let's jump to 950 yards. Yeah, no, very, very, yeah, on the right gun, this right here would be pretty easy to play shots. It's not the optics, it's gonna be a limiting factor. Yeah, it looks very, really nice. It's actually a usable 32, I will say. Sometimes there's like just gimmicky types of zooms, um, but no, this has got the glass quality to back it up. You could use 32 power here. All right, and lastly, the good old Vortex Razor HD Gen 3. Funny enough, what I noticed is that six power with the length of this barrel and the suppressor. Suppressor is kind of in the frame at the bottom there. All right, we're gonna go ahead and crank it up a little bit to about 16 power here. And that's just a different kind of perspective. This is, um, yeah, really nice glass quality, what can I say? Not really seeing any chromatic aberration. I wouldn't expect so at this price point with this Japanese glass. Yeah, that just looks pretty freaking good. Not much to say about that. Really nice, very fine, fine information rich reticle. Yeah, I mean, not much else to say. It's uh, it's really good. Totally unnecessary to zoom more than that at 100 yards. Go to 526 here, and let's just start cranking, I guess. We've got 30 power right here. Just because it's available to us, let's go to 36. Adjust the parallax. That is a very usable 36 as well, man. That's a lot of zoom to be able to use that well. It's a, some great cl glass quality then. And again, I just looked at it through my phone and it's just not gonna give you guys the perspective of clarity I see because it's just getting lost in my phone, you know, but trying my best here. Let's go ahead and move on over to, um, to 950 yards, crank it all the way to 36 again. Let's just not waste any time. Oh yeah. And that gives me the best definition I've seen so far on all the rocks down there, the uh, five inch targets, everything. That looks quite nice, as we would expect. At this point, with this kind of zoom range, which again, I don't want you guys to think 36 zoom is what you need on your platform at all, but at this point, it's almost like a spotting scope 
on your gun with anything. This is an important thing to note before we start shooting under the $200 scope here. An important thing to note is this isn't just long range scopes, but anything in the gun world or anything in any world is something called diminishing returns. Um, as quality goes up, price point can too, but just because something is more expensive, it could very well mean it's better, but not by the margin of its price increase as well. You can spend twice as much on an optic, but it doesn't mean it's twice as usable, twice as good, but it might be better, just not twice as good. Same way, I mean, just because I can't do math on the fly, let's just go ahead and say this is $3,000 divided by the $200. Yeah, you get 15 of those Arkin scopes for one of these. That Does that mean this is 15 times more usable? Will it be 15 times more accurate? No, diminishing returns, but doesn't mean it's not better, because it is. So it's up to you to decide your price point, and uh, I'm sure there's something that fits in line with what you're trying to do from there. That's the rundown. That's as, probably as geeky as I want to get with a comparison. Hope you guys can see enough footage from my phone and take my word for what the quality I'm kind of seeing here. But let's go ahead and just run a $6,300 rifle with the $200 optic, zero it, because I haven't shot through it yet, and just see how we could do on this very windy day. Go to 950 yards with that very deal. So uh, let's go ahead and just do that. All right, finally, after all that talking, let's go ahead and get rounds down range with this Arkin. All right, on steel now. All right, that looks like it's bang on the money. I guess that's good enough to go to paper. That looks real good. Not bad, I'll dial it one to the left. That's, that's a good zero to me. Cool. All right, so what's cool about this, dead simple to zero. Again, every scope's gonna be a little different. So I already got the caps removed. So right now I'm on four elevation and I'm on some random number for wind. This one happens to be toolless, so that's nice. So I'm just gonna remove this, lift this, reference that to zero, and it does not get much easier than that. There's no zero stop on this one, like I said, for a hunting specific optic, no big deal. So same thing now for wind, she is referenced to zero. All right, guys. Not messing around with anything but 950 yards. Three Damn. Left. Yeah, no kidding. Oh, just left. All right. I feel like I gotta act quick because that wind's so decisive. Oh man, you gotta act quick with these conditions, otherwise. Yeah. Things are going to move quick with this wind here. Ah, oh. I was holding about there too. So that wind just decided to shift a little bit. Now I'm going back to zero hold for wind, which is crazy. I'll put these last two in the internal mag here. Impact. Oh, not far off on that one. Okay, there we go. Hopefully you guys can even hear me at all with these winds. That is some aggressive wind. And that is like, so 12 o'clock I was holding a target and a half left at one point, a half a target right at one point. Um, and all the while I'm just holding over. We did an initial dial, uh, put in some information real quickly on the ballistic calculator, but the optic itself is not holding me back from this range whatsoever. It's not like I'm clicking a lot and it's, we got unreliable tracking by any means. Um, the thing's doing fine. So it's just this win more than anything, but it proves the point. The optic itself at this range on this expensive rifle doesn't feel like the limiting factor whatsoever. And so that in itself is pretty darn cool. I know this was a pretty broad video, didn't get too nitty gritty with anything particularly, but it's just a subject I wanted to cover because I get asked all the time, what's a good scope I should get? And there's just a lot of good options. And putting on a $200 optic on a $6,300 rifle kind of shows the extreme spread on that. Not that I recommend it, but it works. And so there's a lot of things that work. So you gotta decide what's right for you. Hopefully this video will give you a little bit of that clarity. So thanks for watching. See you guys next time.